All right, you guys, we're gonna talk about opportunity cost uh, today. So we have two PPCs, um, one for a different economy. I'm gonna give you a micro example. This could be for two different countries. It could be US and Mexico or something like that. It doesn't matter whether it's a micro or macro example. In this one, we have, again, two products being made. We're assuming that there's only two things that people can do. In this case, it is either to bake cookies or to bake brownies. And then also we're assuming there's only two people in this case, we have LeBron and Wade. All right, and so LeBron and Wade have the opportunity to either make cookies or to make brownies. That's the only things that they're gonna do. And so what our PPCs show us, remember our production possibilities curve, is what's the total amount of cookies or brownies that they can make. LeBron can use all of his efforts on making cookies, in which case he'll make 100 cookies, but zero brownies, or he can do the opposite, make 50 brownies, no cookies, or any combination along or inside that curve. Wade, on the other hand, can make 50 cookies with all his effort, or he can make 200 brownies, or some kind of combination. Now, when you're figuring out opportunity costs, we don't really care about the combinations inside. These are linear, so remember, we have constant opportunity costs in this case. So it doesn't matter what point we're looking at, the opportunity cost remains the same. What we are trying to figure out here is which one of them, what will be the most productive thing to do? Have them each make some cookies and some brownies? Or maybe we should have them specialize. So the idea that this unit, that this section is based on is specialization. Specialization is the idea that when you do something a lot, you get better at it. And I'm sure that you would agree with that, that being the case. So you focus on doing one thing over and over and over again, you'll get better and better and better at it. So rather than have um, both of them making both cookies and brownies, what would probably be better is if LeBron makes one thing, Wade makes the other, and then they trade with each other. So another thing that we're learning in this section is that there are gains from trade. Both people or groups can be better off if we trade. Okay? So, in this example, we have two terms I wrote on the board here, so I'll kind of move out of the way. We have absolute advantage and we have comparative advantage. Absolute advantage is the easy one, and it's also a one that doesn't matter as much. Absolute advantage just means that you can produce more of that good or service. So you're better at it. So whoever has the higher number, that means that they have an absolute advantage. So all you do is you look, see, all right, who has the absolute advantage in making cookies? LeBron can make 100 cookies, Wade can only make 50. Which number is greater? 100 greater than 50. LeBron, therefore, has the absolute advantage in making cookies. It is that simple. When it comes to making brownies, LeBron can make 50, Wade can make 200. Wade has the absolute advantage in making brownies. The thing about absolute advantage is that it doesn't matter, especially when we're talking, because in this example, I put it so that LeBron is better at cookies, Wade is better at brownies. A lot of the questions that you'll have, you'll see that one person or one country is better at both things. So it could be that LeBron can make 100 cookies or 400 brownies. That would make him better at both. That doesn't mean that LeBron should do everything himself and Wade should do nothing. That's not very productive. What will tell us which one that they should each do is who has the comparative advantage, meaning who has the lower opportunity cost. So before we get into figuring out the math of it, which isn't that difficult, just to make sure that we're good on this conceptually. Um, I want you to picture people playing sports. So you're getting ready to pay, play a uh, pickup game of football. All right, so you're gonna play, it's gonna be a five on five, um, picking teams, and so you have your squad, and you have your five guys, your five people, right? Um, let's say that one person is the best quarterback of the group. So if we were rating them um, on a scale of one to 10, he's a nine and a half as quarterback. But he also is the best receiver on the team. Like the kid is just the best, all right? So he's a nine and a half as a quarterback and he's a nine and a half as a receiver. He can't do both. So now you as a team, so you are the team captain, you have to decide, all right, does this kid play quarterback or does he play receiver? How do you make that decision? The answer is that you make that decision the best way is by comparing, well, what's the opportunity cost? You have to look at the next best person. So let's say that your next best quarterback, again, reading on a one through 10 scale, your next best quarterback is a nine. So you have a really good second best quarterback. Your next best receiver though is like a five. That means that your best person, he should probably be a receiver. 
um, because you aren't giving up that much at quarterback. Yeah, you're giving up half a point from a nine after nine. That's not that big a deal. So he'll be better used as a receiver. That'll make your team better. So you're giving up less. Now, when it comes to what they should do, baking cookies, baking brownies, compare advantage means to have a lower opportunity cost, to give up less. So how this question goes is it's going to ask you what is to figure out. So the question, there's a few different ways this question goes. It'll ask you who has the comparative advantage. The way we figure that out is to figure out opportunity cost. Okay, so that's the bottom line is what we need to do is figure out what is each of them, LeBron and Wade, what is their opportunity cost for making one cookie or for making one brownie. And from there, we'll walk through it when we get there. So the first one, I just set up this little kind of table here. You can make something similar if this helps. LeBron, we're trying to figure out what is his opportunity cost for making one cookie. In other words, for him to make one additional cookies, how many brownies could he have made? What is he giving up? All right, so since he could make, and I'm going to kind of do the work over here, and I'll probably erase it as I go, we'll put our final answers in this table. He could make 100 cookies. We're trying to figure out what's he giving up to make one single cookie. So the way we do that is we're going to divide 100 by both sides because we want this to equal 1. So for him to make one single cookie, how many brownies does he give up? Well, since we've had to divide by 100 on this side to get us down to one cookie, we're going to divide our number of brownies by the same thing. So 50 brownies is what he could make divided by 100. And then this is where you never thought it was going to come into play. Simplifying fractions from like third grade or something like that comes into play. 50 divided by 100 is 1 half. 1 half what? Over here we're going to put it, his opportunity cost is half, and I'm just going to put the letter B, half of a brownie. That is what LeBron is giving up. So what that is telling us, so what does that mean? For every one cookie that he makes, he is giving up the opportunity to make half of a brownie. And one quick way to know, because what people always get confused on is which one's the numerator, which one's the denominator. Um, one way to look at it is which number is bigger. If you're looking at the opportunity cost for the bigger number, for cookies in this case, you see that he makes less brownies. That answer, your opportunity cost, should always be less than the number one. It should be a fraction less than one. When we go the other way, it should be a number greater than one when you're talking about the smaller number. So just something to keep in mind so that because our numbers are going to be the same because we're basically going to flip it around, you'll see in a second. All right, now on this one, we're going to stick with LeBron for a minute. We're going to get LeBron's opportunity cost for both. What is he giving up to make one brownie? Well, he could make 50 brownies. So to determine, to get that to equal one, we have to divide it by 50. So 50 brownies, we want to know how many takes, how many uh, cookies he's giving up. So we divide that side by 50, so now we have to do the same thing for the cookies. So, or you can make 100 cookies. We do 100, sorry, over 50, not 500. Uh, that's a little ugly. One take Lamana. I don't know if you knew that yet. Lamani does everything in one take. 100 over 50 equals 2. Now make sure you label it because just that number isn't going to be a right answer. 2C or 2 cookies. So what this is telling us is for him to make one brownie, he could have made two cookies. That is what he is giving up. So he can make double the amount of cookies as he can brownies. So for him to make one cookie, he's giving up half a brownie. For him to make one brownie, he's giving up two cookies. All right, hopefully you're with me so far. Now we have to do the same thing for Wade because we don't know anything yet. So for Wade, our numbers are a little bit different. What is Wade's opportunity cost for making one additional cookie? So since he can make 50 cookies, again, to make that equal 1, we divide that side by 50. So 50 over 50 equals 1, which means we have to do the same now for the other. So to figure out how many brownies he's giving up is 200 over 50, which equals 4. So Wade is giving up 4 brownies. And we can, again, kind of prove that because he can make 50 cookies. He can make a lot more brownies, so more than one. So we check your answer and it's right. Last one, 
What is this opportunity cost of making one additional brownie? We divide it by 200 in this case, because you can make 200 brownies, so for him to make one more, 200 divided by 200. What we do to that, we've got to do to the other. 50 over 200 equals 1 fourth, and we're probably noticing that these numbers are all reciprocals of each other, and that's good. We should be noticing that, and that will always be true. Um, and so that's telling us that Wade is giving up 1 fourth of a cookie. So the last thing that's important now is now that we have these numbers figured out, we know what their opportunity cost is for each of them, it's who should do what. So who should make cookies, LeBron or Wade? So what we look at for that question, who has the comparative advantage in making cookies, what is their opportunity cost? LeBron's is half of a brownie, Wade is giving up four brownies. Comparative advantage means the person who has the lower opportunity cost. So now we are literally just looking at what number is smaller. And the smaller number has the comparative advantage because they have a lower opportunity cost. So that means LeBron has the comparative advantage when it comes to making cookies because he is giving up fewer brownies. On the other hand, Wade is only giving up one-fourth of a cookie, whereas LeBron's giving up two cookies. So Wade's opportunity cost for making brownies is lower. So if you're asked which one they should specialize in or who should make what, LeBron should make cookies, Wade should make brownies because they have the comparative advantage. It does not matter about the absolute advantage. It does not matter. In this case, they happen to have both absolute and comparative. Um, comparative is what matters. And just another little thing to keep in mind, one person cannot have a comparative in both things. That will not happen. So it will always be that one person has a comparative in one, the other will have the comparative for the other, and that will always work out. So that is a basic introduction to the idea of opportunity cost. All right? See you guys next time.